promotion. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> Every week I get to be promoted to a co-host. You are promoted to co-host this week, and next week you will also be promoted to co-host. Congratulations. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you. <laughs> this is my new smile I'm working on, guys. What do you think? Ooh, that's yeah. a good smile. I no like teeth. that. No teeth? Oh, but a lot of eye. Lots of eye. That's real good. That's real good. Smile oh, he started screen eye. sharing. Oh, he's oh. already started screen sharing. Hey, there I am. <laughs> I was going to say I'm cosplaying as my dad circa 1980. Uh, uh. <laughs> Thank you. Don't feel like watching movies, so I'll watch people guess them instead. I don't know how it goes. I think it starts with your Sorry guys, I'm uh, for all you uh, audio listeners and not on the youtube.com slash the valley folk watching the video, I look like my dad circa 1980, which also looks like a bunch of people with really bad hair and a mustache. Yeah, well it's definitely a, it's Jason Schwartzman as Ringo Starr from Walk Hard. Yeah, there you go. It's exactly, more than anything. That's, that's what, what we're, we're looking at. That's what we're given. Guys, how we doing today? What's up everybody? You know? It's a morning. You know, we do. Monday. I feel like every time we do this, we do it a little earlier. Pretty soon we're going to do this at 6 a.m. <laughs> this might, this is not, I think our record for a start is like 7 a.m. We had to do it for some crazy Whoa. reason. I Maybe it was like, some, yeah, it was that. like a holiday or something. Yeah. Coming up. Eight is, normally, eight is normally like, that means we're doing it early. We don't like going earlier than eight. Mm-mm. <laughs> I yeah. my, I need because you know I'll tell you guys something, man. At my What's age, your I can't be pushing out poops like I'm a 14 year old where I'm like, because I'm gonna blast a gasket, and I can't mm -hmm. do that before the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please, no, no gasket blasting, please. My God. We're at an age, Joe, where you push a little too hard, you're talking trunk butt. You're going right into the. You're going straight to the hospital. Guys, I, uh, I I I put my professional pants on this morning, and I wrote some bullet points down for things that we could talk about. Whoa! Would you talk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> it's like an instant click. That he turned uh. on. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> look, I gotta look a little bit more. I gotta look a little more depressed. Uh, Are I we got gonna three talk about. Points. Can we guess what? I want to guess if one of the one of the can bullet points is threads. Can I guess if we're going to talk about Ken Griffey Jr.? Uh, <laughs> Just Ken for no Griffey reason. Jr.'s there's, new Threads account? Do you <laughs> know, there's there's no world where you know who Ken Griffey Jr. actually is. Yes, no, does. definitely not. I think it's because... Give me, <laughs> give me three facts about Ken Griffey Jr. Right now. Oh, shit. Um, there's video games with his name in it. Yes, that's true. Okay. There, that's, you got one. Two more, dude. Um, let's see. He was a baseball player. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and his dad was named Ken Griffey Sr. <laughs> no, that's incorrect. His dad was named Ken Griffey, and then he became Ken Griffey Sr. once Ken Griffey Jr. was born. So uh, uh, I'm taking that one away. <laughs> Damn it. I can't Did give you, you three. <laughs> you're, 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 some lady just spends like 17 hours in labor. She gives birth, and then this little bundle of joy comes out. And then the crazy crazy dad comes in and he's like hey we're gonna call him jack jack senior <laughs> and she's like there's no jack jack senior. even in the line who's yeah. jack and he's like i don't care we're calling yeah, but him senior he'll be uh, senior someday i bequeath the senior <laughs> you call him that because you want him to name your grandson after that name you just came up yeah. with <laughs> so it's like you're already making him Name his son Junior, Junior. by calling him yep. Senior <laughs> uh, <laughs> from birth. Kevin, you are correct. Threads was on there. It was kind of as an afterthought, but I figured we'd probably get there anyways. But the first two were uh, what I'm a slut for and also Ooh. how I'm slutting for myself. So where should we start? <sighs> I would I'm love a slut for. Wh what are you a slut for? Yeah, guys, I am a freaking Dude, that's insane. <laughs> the timing, the timing the on timing, it is crazy. crazy. <laughs> when it when it pauses like that for us, is it pausing like that for the audience as well? Yes. The recording, great, yes. awesome, good job. <laughs> All right, I am a slut for incredibly drawn out marketing campaigns of fighting oh. video games 
that are revealing characters that are going to be in the fighting game, like one Wait. character at a time every week. I didn't this, know this was a thing. Is this happening? Yeah, Mortal Kombat is on this big oh, like, Mortal Kombat. Combat. Mortal Kombat One, because they're going back in time, back to the original. Whoa. What so do you mean? Re- what do you mean by that? Like it should be Mortal Kombat Twelve, but it's but Mortal doing... Kombat One. Are they they're, actually they're... calling it One, or they're just yeah. calling it? <laughs> yeah. So it's like wait, wait what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't uh, do it. I can't, you're okay with that? Thing. But it doesn't matter. You're Dude. okay with that? Wait, what? With You're okay with them calling it Mortal Kombat 1? <laughs> I, I see. That's the thing. I don't care about <coughs> any of the games that I'm talking about enough to really care, but I'm a slut for, like, the dopamine hit of, like, ooh, who are they revealing this? Every time a fucking Mortal Kombat game comes out, they do this, where they're like, okay, well, we got Johnny Cage and Sonya, and then it's like, ooh, show me what's <laughs> happening next time. Then they'll show, like, Scorpion and Sub-Zero. And Mortal Kombat's marketing campaign super cool, too, because they re- usually reveal, like, a fatality in all yeah, of these I was going to ask, like, do they do a full trailer or do they just, like, show an image of it? Yeah, yeah, they it's do really a full cool. Thing. And yeah. I'll go to the fucking websites, like, in Sm- when Smash Brothers was coming out years ago, I would, ke- every day, I would refresh the website and be like, who are they going to put in it? That, I felt it? similarly about that, for sure, about the Smash Brothers one, but the Mortal Kombat one, I don't really care too much about, I guess. I Did I give- recently see uh, uh, that they're, is this just a joke, that they're, that Colonel Sanders is going to be in Mortal Kombat? No, it's a joke. That's it's a joke? A joke. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? Because they've done some weird shit. They've never I done mean, anything that weird. They do cool weird shit. Like, they bring in, like, uh, like Stallone as Rambo. Yeah. And the Terminator. Yeah. And all the horror icons. But that's, no, like, a complete joke. They're bringing is it? In... You've seen that, though? <clears throat> no, I haven't. They're bringing in Homelander. He's going to be in the Whoa. game. This time. Oh, that's right. I, I did see that. I They're did see that in Homeland. Peacemaker is, is going to be in it, which is really <clears throat> okay. cool. And then Omni Man. So, like, that's like Whoa. super cool across the board. Dude, when does Invincible come back? I need Oh, okay. That wait. It's again. Street Fighter. It's Street Fighter where Street Fighter has KFC is coming, where Colonel Sanders is coming. I could coming. see them doing something crazy like that with the how they're doing things. But now Street Fighter. It looks like Seth Whoa. Rogen. Yeah, he does. A buff Seth Rogen. Street Fighter 6 is fast food collaborations throwing its front me. No way. I can't believe that's actually a thing. That'd be cool. Kind of cool. That's fun. Though. Yeah. Talk about some. Dude, that's I like. Mean, fast food <laughs> mascot. Where is Chef Colonel Sanders? Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Why does he look like Seth Rogen? Dude, Dude he, he looks, looks <clears throat> not like <laughs> Colonel Sanders. He needs a different outfit on. Yeah. He needs the red and white. Yeah. Um, so Street Fighter did it too. They they were recently revealing characters. I don't give two shits about Street Fighter. However, I agree. I also don't. I used I, to like it. I, I mean, obviously I was, the original. Yeah, good. but like I'm still just like marketing campaign got me. I'm gonna check it Damn. out all the time because I want to see the special moves that so I'll never use. <clears throat> who are you excited about right now? Who's in? Who's in on Mortal Kombat? Who's in oh, that yeah. you are excited about right now? I'm not. That's the thing. I don't even He's care. He's not gonna you probably care. play it. Yeah, he's I don't not even, even care. Play it. I just but, love. But what have you game. seen that you like? <clears throat> uh, not much. I find the art style a little uh, lacking. Like I kind of think they took a step backwards um, yeah. so far from what I've seen. But a lot of cool character designs. It's got rain. It's got. Uh, it's got all the classics. Scorpion, yeah. Sub Zero, Rain, Smoke, uh, Raiden, Johnny Cage. But they're doing a is Sonya Blade. Matter. She is in there. But oh. I don't even want to talk about Mortal Kombat, really. I just wanted to talk about how, like, I'm a slut for the marketing campaigns. I, I get like, oh, Yeah, I, I really thought you like were going to mention Barbie. I thought you were going to talk. I thought you were going to mention Barbie. because I don't care about Barbie. Because the, the Barbie marketing campaign has been endless, it feels like. It has yeah. been. I, it, I'm so I, – I'm so not interested. I'm not, I I'm might inter- see it. Oh, you might see it. See, I'm, I'm interested uh, in seeing it, but I'm not like people are being obsessed about it. And I'm, not I'm at upset. That level. I'm upset that I'm not into it. Like, I wish I was a little bit more into it. I'm like on the op- the Oppenheimer train. One hundred percent. Me too. Me too. I'm, I'm way more excited about Oppenheimer for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah. And, and Barbie, I'd say Barbie is like an afterthought for me. Like, I mm-hmm. like I'll go see it. But I'm definitely way more excited about Oppenheimer for some reason, even though that movie is going to be hard to watch and, and oh, uh, it's awful gonna dis- probably. Probably destroy us on I've heard some level. people say that it's like a terrifying movie. Like it's, it, like, a, it's, like, it's like a horror. It's film like a horror almost. movie. Yeah, I love it. I'm so excited. <laughs> I love it. I want to see. Did you guys see this? 
What? Is that Wolverine is that Hugh walking Jack? with Deadpool? Yes, it in is. His, like OG X Men suit, dude. He's in the suit. He's in the yeah. yellow and blue suit. That's, That's crazy. Yep, that's the OG Wolverine costume from the animated series, I guess. Is that Deadpool really 3? Cool. That's Deadpool yeah. 3. Oh, interesting. Remember the, the marketing for that was pretty fun, too, when mm. they introduced that a while back. Has, has there been any, like, marketing campaigns that you guys have just been, like, over the, like, you remember well, just being caught up in? Like, well, you know what? the Cloverfield one really yeah, got that. me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, marketing campaign, marketing campaign. Um, man, that's a good question. What are what are some other examples of like big, awesome marketing campaigns? It might be it might be too early for you to to go into it. Like Cloverfield's probably a great example of one, right? But I'm trying to think of like a modern one. Yeah, me too. That's not marketing. just like so quick. I mean, things that like, just I like, feel like they they. They come out with stuff so fast now. It's like there's not some big journey that I go on with. I mean, there's definitely stuff. something. There's got to be something, right? Because well, then, then there's like accidental marketing campaigns that like the 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 world provided for a place, and they're like, "We're well, fuck it, we're just gonna let it go." Like the most recent one was this grimace shake thing. Oh yeah, exactly. it's a birthday grimace's birthday. Like Dude. I'm gonna get on this train of doing the social <laughs> media post of the grimace shake thing. Would yeah. you say yeah. that that was a success? That grimace birthday thing. Yes, yes. Because everybody was talking about it and stuff? And because Ellie started crying because she was watching TikToks about Grimace being left alone at his birthday party. Because there's this big... (laughs) There's this big thing happening... Where people have been making like animations of like nobody showing. I up saw to this cute little grimace that said, yeah. "Why did everybody throw it up or something? Yeah. Why did everybody yeah. spit it out?" <laughs> and Ellie literally started. She Facetime me crying because she was like <laughs> so it got sad. Her. Yeah. <laughs> was grimace. it her woman's time of the month? I don't think it was, man. I think she's just, <laughs> she's weird. just a, does she cry about <laughs> dumb shit? <laughs> no, that was the dumbest <laughs> thing I've pretty dumb. heard her cry. <laughs> it's pretty about. dumb to just, cry about. It just and I told her. her that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's got a connection to Grimace, I guess. <laughs> I guess, dude. Or she, she just it. or she just can't resist a good sad birthday story. That's what I think it might have been. That's why I yeah. said, like, did you as a kid like get have nobody show up to your birthday party? And she said no. So, it's but it's like, about- but there's nothing sadder when you think about it. When you're yeah. a kid, when no one shows up to your birthday party, <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> breaks my heart. It's like, why is your uncle there? <laughs> why is just your uncle there? Uh. Well, Steve, you like, I feel like you've been susceptible. Maybe like ten years ago, fifteen years ago, Steve was super susceptible to this stuff. Like another recent. Yeah. Example would be like, and I don't think you were susceptible to this. It was this is older, Steve. But like when the Szechuan sauce came back with Rick, Rick and Morty, and everybody went, Buck. "Oh yeah." Well, you know, it's interesting because, I mean, I, I for some reason I remembered what it even tasted like. What do you mean? The Szechuan sauce. Like I remember having the Szechuan sauce when Mulan came out when I was like a kid. And like McDonald's and brought the I Szechuan see. sauce, and you remember that? Taste. Yeah, I remember it because I liked it a lot. I remember yeah. being like, "Oh man, they need to keep this here," and then they and then it went away with Mulan, and then it just never came back. And then you just had to kind of forget about it. And then and then they they brought it up as a joke on Rick and Morty, hmm. and I was like, yeah, "Oh shit, that's a super relatable bit because I love that fucking Szechuan sauce." And then when they were bringing it back, it was like, "Oh fuck." Oh, so it did get you. Well, it wasn't like I wasn't going to wait in lines. <clears throat> but or, 10 years or, ago, Steve would have. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Comic-Con it's, loving Steve. Before yeah, Steve yeah. had to go to Comic-Con for work, maybe I would have liked it. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, you but, probably don't remember yeah. that. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Steve. I well, I was going to say, eventually I got it and, and, and easily. Like, I remember, I remember one night I was just like, driving through a McDonald's after work or something. And I was like, yeah, can I just get this and that? And then it got to the, uh, the, uh, window where you get, where you get your food. And I was like, Oh, do you guys, do you guys happen to have any of this Szechuan sauce? And they're like, Oh yeah, yeah, actually we do. And I'm like, Whoa, what? I was like, Oh shit. I was like, can I have like four? And they were like, yeah, 
Yeah. Whoa, <laughs> and then I was one like, place that had it. Yeah. Well, it was just like ra- so random. You know, it was like all the nerds had already picked it clean and they had like whatever left. But yeah. but I remember I I, uh, I I got four of them and I used two with my meal. And I was like, wow, that I just had a, a quiet little nostalgic, nostalgic yeah. adventure. Uh, and I was just like, wow, this is so crazy. It tastes exactly the same. It's so good. It's exactly how I remembered it <laughs> tasting. And then I had two left and I remember I left them in my fridge for like the longest time. And I was like, I guess I'll just keep these in here. And because if I, you know, whatever, maybe it'll just be like a little prop that I can have or whatever. And then eventually I think I, I my my um, obsession or my uh, my want of them outweighed the, uh, the collector you know, side of the you. collector <laughs> side. And I was like, ah, I'm going to eat these fucking I'm going to eat it. Uh, you should have. That's what it's for. That. Yeah. Uh, Steve or Steve, you probably remember this. Kevin, I feel like you probably do not. But because you were dead, you were not alive. You were pre. You were pre. You, you were, were pre dead. You were pre dead. <laughs> uh, late nineties and the nineties in general. I'm talking about that when someone before someone was born. You're pre dead. You were dead. dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were dead. You weren't even around yet. Uh, you didn't count yet. But like late nineties, like mid nineties, there was a lot of like collectors' items being shoved into food things, like cereal boxes but also like doritos and a lot of like lays things steve do you remember like the big star push end of the 90s when a phantom menace coming out there were like collectible oh. hologram cards shoved in like every single Doritos. <laughs> yeah. yeah and there were those like lenticular ones that you could yep. like and it came in that little cool. white it was like a white plastic wrapper around yep. the like little lenticular hologram thing mm-hmm. and yeah dude i remember collecting those i had one exactly. where the all the x-wings were like flying in to formation yep. i was like ah it's like i got star <laughs> war in a card and how <laughs> many bags of doritos did you have to buy to get that specific one that you wanted i mean maybe a little bit more than we would have gotten already <laughs> now if millions of people are doing a little bit more yeah, yeah i know they normally that's, would. that's what they want that's what they yeah. want so it worked i don't I feel did like that they do with that mcdonald's anymore. happy meal toys when i remember they used to do like almost like transformers i remember there was a transformer one where you had to like get each transformer and then if you got them all you could build them all together to make a giant one and i had those to do bastards that. yeah and then Whoa. i they when uh the cars movie came out they had each individual character from the cars movie and i had like my mom had to take me to mcdonald's all over southern california to finally get every single one that i, I know they really they really like locked into like children's want and need for like a certain specific thing and and they make it hard to get it like you know like a lot of times i remember learning at some point maybe like 10 years old and above that like you could just ask like if you went to go get yeah. a happy meal toy you could just ask if they Which had toy you, the yeah. toy you wanted <laughs> do you yeah. remember that joe <laughs> oh i remember but i don't remember many of them ever succumbing to the like i feel like oh. they got they got oh, they, coached to be like you get what you get kid. i think really? we were right on the cusp of that and they were i most of the time they didn't give a shit it felt like i felt like we were the i was like the only person in oxnard doing that <laughs> Man, it doesn't. That and does I not might have been. <laughs> no, I'm. I'm sure no, of now it. it doesn't. I'm yeah. sure of it not. But back then, you could be like, yeah, yeah um, so I really want the red fraggle. You guys have the red fraggle. That's how we did it. My mom and would like, call McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, we because yeah, <laughs> people what? working there don't. Yeah, because the people working there don't give a shit. No. Wait, 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 no, no, no. But but Kevin is talking about his parents going a step further. Yeah. You, call, you called ahead. You could call My ahead. Yeah, I wasn't. I don't think ahead. I was above calling ahead. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Did you guys? Just speaking of calling McDon- calling ahead at McDonald's and like McDon- and weird shit, I just watched this like TikTok of someone did you know you could get a sheet cake from mcdonald's no no yeah you can just it gets, <laughs> it, it's just a menu item that like nobody really gets i love and menu hacks like i this. know i didn't even know and like this guy was like yeah right and so he goes to mcdonald's and he films the whole experience and he's like he goes to the drive through and they're like yeah can we help you and he's like yeah can i get a birthday cake and they're like 
yeah, is that all you want? <laughs> it's like, yeah. And then he goes to the, he pays for it. It was like $8. Is it the, is it the Ronald McDonald? Yeah. Cake? Yeah. White? It's like a, it, yeah, it's a white Ronald McDonald sheet cake. And it, and it's like in the metal tint, like the, there's like metal yeah. all around it. And it's only nine bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And it's got Ron, it's got Ronald printed on it. And it's a little, so what, you think cake. they're just like have them pre-made somewhere they, in the back. And yeah. Just, Cause yeah. Yeah. Cause even I think the box that it came in was like plastic wrapped. Yeah. That makes sense. So they get, they probably they get sent seen. frozen as a motherfuck to mm-hmm. their McDonald's. They, maybe they get like four. Yeah. They, you know, nobody knows about it. <laughs> and then yeah. they, yeah, and then they just keep it in the fridge where it defrosts. Interesting. <laughs> Joe looks Interesting. disgusted. What do you no, think, no, no, Joe? No, no, Are you no. going to get it for your kids? <laughs> no, here's what I'm thinking. We were just talking about, like, brilliant marketing campaigns. Like, I'm looking at all, like, all of the, the news articles and stuff, and they're all from, like, June. So real recent that this oh. has been discovered, yada, yada, yada. I wonder if this is a McDonald's-initiated thing where they're like, we'll make a TikTok, we'll have some oh, yeah, some yeah, TikToks yeah, yeah, yeah. And now they're selling these. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of that. A lot of manipulating, like, like marketing now has to get kind of like clever. You know, it's it's less about like, um, in a lot of ways, it's less about uh, uh, quantity and more about like how do we sneak, how do we sneak it in? (laughs) Well, especially into like the cacophony of like everything that's out there because there's no used to be like we all shared the same viewing experiences because everything was on TV. We cared yep. about 10 channels and people would buy the advertising and everybody right. would see the commercials. Right. It's not like that anymore. How, no. do you, how do you get into the conscious of everybody? How do you get to the algorithm? And, and yep. the zeitgeist, yeah. Remember when you would like get a meeting at like a really cool company when you were like in the heyday of like us doing like, you know, f- uh, public facing entertainment. And you'd get like invited to like a meeting at like some cool, like I remember getting invited to like Netflix to to, like sit in on like a meeting at one point. And I was like, why am I, why am I, I didn't even, I don't even know why I was invited, but it was like a group of like 10 like influencer people or something. And then you go into this meeting and they're like, we're trying to make a viral video. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, we yeah, think yeah. you guys are the key to like unlocking a viral <laughs> video and i was like if i could do that i would do it myself yeah yeah <laughs> you know and there's just no way like I, m- companies are just like we're they're so obsessed with like finding the next way to market their product to people and they would just kind of like pour money into like you know viral. youtube creators and be like hey you guys you can make us a viral video and it's like i don't think we could do that i don't think that's <laughs> i'm sure just, that still happens now with tiktok i'm sure of same it way. yeah yeah I, I think the ex I, th- I do feel like the understanding from the top because that was just a bunch of old out of touch people being that was like, and like, that was back I, in the day yeah. i like that word and it seems like a big deal do it now I feel right. like the money is still poured into influencers, but I think they know what they're getting out of it, was, which is basically a, hey, tell your audience to buy this as a oh. Well, yeah, sure. It, yeah, I mean, yeah. utilizing, because I mean, eyeballs, um, eyeballs, yeah, eyeballs are always going to be an interest, you know, the, even if it's like, you know, maybe only 10% of your audience will even respond to this you know but it's still important for them to to shove like so much money at at just getting as many eyes as possible on their product but yeah with TikTok, it's so much easier now um you could just like grab you know i mean it's but also like isn't it funny how obvious to a lot of us who have been working in the industry for a while how obvious it is when something is like definitely manufactured yeah, to fake. Be, and people like don't even realize or don't care or whatever i feel it's like so that's interesting. so much of what i see now it's just it's fake so shit much that people believe yeah yeah Ooh, the, I, my, I, the my, ones my that least... really oh, oh go, go ahead. ahead go oh i was gonna say my least favorite genre right now is viral video or viral tiktok of something bad that happened like yeah the one that i've been seeing lately is like kid comes in and scares his mom on ladder who falls on couch she dumps paint all over herself. Kid runs out of the room screaming. It's the most staged thing that I've ever yeah. seen in my yeah, life. Yeah, people I hate believe it. it. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. yeah, 
so it, it, what I appreciate is when they get real good is when you're like, fuck, was that real? I don't know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, those but are m- awesome. most of the time. Here's a tip for those people who are listening to this that might want a way to navigate around a lot of like fake. Hold on. Let me uh, find the track of Steve's tip. Yes, remember yeah. Steve's tips? Play. Okay. Guys, if you're looking for a way to navigate the consistent fake videos you see on TikTok that people don't give a shit if they're fake or not, what you need to do more than anything is visualize where the camera is in the video and if the camera is anywhere near where someone unsuspecting can see it then you're looking at a facsimile a lie you're looking at a lie so no don't forget look for where the camera is great tip steve Thanks, man. <laughs> and now let's look at this picture of Dennis Rodman, who just got a tattoo of his girlfriend oh. on his face. <laughs> oh, 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 no. Oh, my gosh. There's so many things happening in Dude. what you're showing us right <laughs> <Yeah>. now. <laughs> whoa. Whoa. Oh, no. Oh, no. Dude. You know. Yeah. I don't know. Dude. I have so many questions. <laughs> the glasses, the hair, the yeah, but like the girl, <laughs> the How girl. The I girl? know. I I know. <laughs> There's a lot going on there. <laughs> That's wow. forever. He's 62. Keep going. 62. She's what? His She's girlfriend, what? Yella Yella. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You could just Jeez. be whatever. You can call yourself whatever you fucking want. <laughs> She's a singer model that I've never heard of. Which makes me feel out of touch. Nah, you're all right. <laughs> oh, yella yella. Uh, oh, yella. I love you, yella yella yella. Nella yella. <laughs> love you, yella. Gala, they call gala me island. yella yella. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find. How old they do we think yella yella, yella yella is? Yella. That's Who what is? I was asking. That's, well, well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. 20. Yella. No. What do you think? Do, Dude, who do you think? Who is yella yella? Let's play. Who I'm is reading... <laughs> Yella Yella? I'm reading 26. an article that says that she told him not to do it. That. <laughs> oh, 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 oh yeah, uh, yeah. Who Look, is number one rule about dating Dennis Rodman is you don't tell Dennis Rodman what to do because he's gonna do it. <laughs> Dennis Rodman's girlfriend Yella Yella is a multi-talented individual known for her work as a hip hop slash rap musical artist mm. rapper model and social media influencer wait a minute is she a rapper twice yeah rapper, no rapper. it says that she's she does she's a hip-hop slash rap rapper. musical oh. artist oh. and <laughs> rapper and rapper <laughs> I want to put that in my bio. Rap musical artist and rapper. And rapper. <laughs> oh. Who is okay. Dennis Rodman? Wait, Who I... is Yella Yella? You, you froze, Joe. God dang it. <laughs> yeah, we need age, Steve. We need age. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay. So so we're, it's going down. And so what I'm reading here is Dennis Rodman's, like, girlfriend history essentially okay so uh it says despite all of these relationships rodman's current relationship with yella yella represents a new chapter in his life it says she is around 34. yeah i i don't okay just just for like funny (laughs) reasons i'm not gonna search any more than the one sentence that i'm seeing at how old is yella yella which is yella (laughs) Born on June sixteenth, somewhere between nineteen eighty four to nineteen. Dude, this is bullshit. <laughs> Wait, is this I'm is this ta- <laughs> is this shit? This is taking the like. This is the this is taking the I'm not gonna tell you how old I am thing to a f- different degree. 
I'm either somewhere around. I'm 20 so- or 47. <laughs> yeah, you decide. <laughs> I'm going to go with 47. <laughs> I just identify as a 14-year-old. That's it. That's, 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 that's... <laughs> hey, guys, my mama mia. It's time for the ads. Don't you know it? You know, sometimes I think about farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes but i have no idea what to do with those things without the guidance of a wonderful service called hello fresh those farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes with hello fresh are delivered right to your doorstep you can skip trips to the grocery store and count on hello fresh to make home cooking easy fun and affordable that's why it's america's number one meal kit okay that's why guys take a bite out of summer for once with hello fresh from chef crafted seasonal recipes to their new fresh and fit summer menu hello fresh brings flavor right to your door pre-portioned ingredients help cut down on food waste while step-by-step instructions make cooking a breeze not a chore it make your home the hangout place this summer with crowd pleasing eats from backyard bratwurst bar to tangy key lime pie hello fresh market makes summer entertaining a cinch you guys and look we've all tried all of us here at the valley cast have tried hello fresh have had hello fresh many times and every time it's easy it's delicious may i dare i say it makes cooking fun we're talking quick easy recipes that even you can make that's right you can make because all of those ingredients are there for you uh and you feel like a dang chef i'll tell you that much but don't take my diggity dang dong word for it no sir or madam or other Go to HelloFresh.com slash ValleyCast50 and use that code ValleyCast50 for 50% off plus free shipping. You heard that right. That's HelloFresh.com slash ValleyCast50 and use that code ValleyCast50 and you'll get 50% off plus free shipping. How about that? HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. All right, everybody, back to the show. So last night I watched. Uh, what, what, can we talk about what we're watching really quick? Like, if we're watching anything, you guys watching anything that you're Dude, really enjoying okay, right Steve, now? Okay, Steve, hold on. Go ahead, buddy. You you said that your favorite, well, your favorite episodes of Black Mirror were the last two episodes. I liked the last one more than any of the other ones. Yeah. Dude, uh, you didn't that's like that? Insane. You didn't like that at all. I hated the last. Like those were awful. Oh, you hated it. Um, we're gonna um, go into super spoiler territory here, if you give a shit. But we're gonna talk about Black Mirror pretty. Did in depth you right now. did you watch the last two? You watched it all, Joe? I did. My overall feelings on this uh, season's Black Mirrors were they're all fine, like standalone Dude. pieces of art, mm-hmm. like totally unassociated with the current like yeah understanding of what Black Mirror is. Like I think I agree, they're yeah. all fine pieces but this is the most convoluted like non through line uh uh, version of a series of black mirror that i've ever seen um i i mean the werewolf you know every season oh i loved the werewolf one you didn't like that i don't understand did you not like that's what i'm talking about did you not like it because prior black mirrors were all about sci-fi and tech but this was just like some weird and like horror anthology episode yeah I just didn't like it as anything, as entertainment. It wasn't wow. entertaining. Wow, like none of it or just that one? None of it, dude. Or wow, no, what just the fuck? Not, the first three episodes, I dug. I said that, but the, the last two, me and Ellie, like, comparing we the first, We were skipping through the episode because we just knew what was going to happen. I loved the last one because I, I felt like the style and, like, the fact that we were, like, in the 70s and yeah. well, um, we were like dealing with. Like, the cinematography, with... the acting of all of them. Yeah, right. and but I loved the, the like uh, the demon thing because then it felt like it felt more like um, 
Twilight Zone. Like we like you know Black Mirror was Twilight Zone, yeah, but with technology, and now it feels like they're you know for at least this season it felt like they weren't focusing on technology really and but um, i think that convoluted the series like if there was a thesis statement for what i thought black mirror was going into and i could tell somebody what i was what what they were about to watch if they'd never watched it before i could do that but mm -hmm. because of this season i now don't it's... feel like that's the case moving forward which well, i guess I... is fine but like it's it's the the straight up last two episodes were so like like you said twilight zone horror anthology leaning that they didn't feel like Black Mirror episodes. Well, it's interesting because, like, the first episode ever of Black Mirror is, like, not nowhere near a technology, like, nightmare kind of scenario. But, but, like, but it was. But it was. I mean, as much as the Isn't werewolf like one was. like a take was. on society, though? Yeah, like the werewolf one. I would say the werewolf one and the first episode have similarities. But the demon one felt very off. Yeah? The Black Mirror episode. I felt like it captured what like because i mean like every season has like two or three duds agreed you know yeah. like they're not all perfect and even the ones that are duds are like decent as far as like anthology series go like there's a lot of anthology series out there that are like there's one or two in the whole four season history that are like fucking amazing and the rest okay. are just like whatever and I think, like, it's really hard to make an anthology series where, like, every single one is good. I don't think that's – even Twilight Zone isn't like that. Like, there's yeah. some real bad Twilight Zone episodes. Um, But if you compare this one to, like, the last season, like, the last season with the, like, the people in the video game, they were, like, fucking in the video yeah. game world Agreed. and, like – there's like some real like stupid episode. bad ones. Yeah. And I think that if you looked at this new one as a whole – it's like uh, the one where the Netflix show is about the person's life was fine. Like, I think when you compare that one to the demon one, the demon one was like way cooler, I thought. Yeah, wow. I'm so the opposite. In my opinion, yeah. <laughs> I, and yeah. the second episode, the documentary one, is that the one where they're making the yeah. document? Or is that the space one? Lock Henry is the second episode. Yeah, the, the that, one, one. that one was just I'm like. The third one was, yeah, that one felt space. more like season one stuff. Yeah. And then, uh, and then the the space one was like probably the best of the whole season, maybe. Yeah. Up until the uh, last that one and the ten minutes. Like in general, yeah. I mean, I although I will say about the last ten minutes is that I I, I just truly didn't expect that. Oh really? I thought I expected it Let's from see, the outset. I expected it to be like he just switches places with him and leaves him in space while he goes lives and lives his life or whatever. Hmm. But uh, and then what, what was after that one? That was then, then, that was, was, then it was one. that was werewolf. Really? Which, that was just like paparazzi. Yep. There's only paparazzi five paparazzi that then took a big. I will admit, like I was not expecting her to be. Yeah, a I was. It was definitely not expecting werewolves. And then when the werewolf stuff happens, it's like, oh, this is a well done. The transformation was really cool. Mm -hmm. Like I thought that they did like really unique stuff yeah, with like really a werewolf, werewolf story. Bored. I don't know why Ooh. I was just so bored by both of them. Interesting. I did. I, I wonder if you walked one. away. I wonder if you walked away from the the paparazzi werewolf one. Um, I don't like like sometimes like the deplorable characters like coming out on top feels good. But like the fact that like she gets those final photos at the whole thing just felt dirty. Like paparazzi itself is dirty. The fact. Yeah, that you're, I like, agree. You're, you're doing the journey with this paparazzi girl and you're supposed to like kind of maybe empathize for her at times and maybe she has a heart here and there but then she doesn't at the end it's just all gross yeah it's kind of like she i mean obviously it's like if she's choosing to be a paparazzi she's like gross already but it's like you see that she is struggling for money and stuff like that and I she's like a like... good photographer and it's like all right i'll i'll give you that like i'll let you have the like the, the there's like maybe one good paparazzo out of all of them or something yeah but I, even at again, the end she's not great no no definitely yeah. not none of them just... are really like no one's like no, none of these people even are like the last good episode people. yeah yeah that girl that yeah that girl was like i understand the like tortured you know and they did a little they did the race thing too the racial yeah. thing um you know i i understand being pushed to your limits and stuff like that but i do love that at the end they were like ooh, like she was just it was just a domino and she was like imagining the whole thing and then i was like nope it was real 
<laughs> and the world's yeah. ending now. Yeah. I love that. I love when they do shit like that. I, I, I like when they're just like, fuck it, we're going to end the whole world in this one. I thought they were all well made <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day. They looked cool. I thought they were cool choices. Um, I may not have loved every single bit of. Yeah, it's not the best season it, by fu- like at fun. all. I had fun. Yeah, I mean, like, it's one of those things where it's like they could just keep making these forever and uh, and I'll be fine with, like, the consistency and quality that they currently have. Yeah. Uh, Transition. Did you guys watch the American Gladiators documentary? Mm-mm. No, no, but American- I watched it. Is this what you is this what you're watching that you want to talk about? Because I also watched a documentary last night that I very much enjoyed that uh, I'd like to talk about. But let's get one. your American Gladiators first. I was a huge American Gladiators fan growing up, so it was really fun watching it and going back and like seeing the whole story. And it's the it's like the tragic story of all of these people. They uh, they sign contracts and then they get super super get successful, and then they fight to get and then they get fired. Like whatever. Like that's just you know that is that is fucking the Hollywood freaking story. However, there is this. Sigh, one of the greatest documentary twists in history. So they, <laughs> I love a good documentary twist. They, they're 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 interviewing these old gladiators the whole show and like the like the producers from back in the day. But then they focus on two contestants, maybe three. And it's cool to get the contestants' point of view and their side of it, right? And they were pretty successful. Some of them got great stories. But they got this one who was like one of the older contestants in the first season. And Let's, Craig might be his name. Let's call him Craig. And he was 35. He was a father of five. And the gladiators hated him. He was an asshole. He was kind of a dirty competitor. And then he ends up like being the runner up of the season. He almost won okay. it. And then he's like, the producers kind of went behind my back. And I think they changed some rules. So I wouldn't win. Was he like a muscle boy too? Or no, he was just, just a, a regular no, guy? Just regular, regular Joe. Mm-hmm. Just a dad. Wasn't I like that. I like that super athletic or whatever. And he's kind of that's what the whole thing was like. You were going mm -hmm. against these gladiators. Yep. So the every every everyday man going against these gladiators. So they 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 spend like a little bit of time on this guy. And you're like, okay. And it's like early on in the in the the five episodes. Let's say, you know, that's that's always going to be that's going to lead to something interesting when they (laughs) they episode one, episode two. It's one of those two episodes. They spend some time on him and he's got this fun little storyline. You're like, cool. All right, that's over. And they don't talk about him again. And then at the end of the whole series, they do the thing where they're like, where are they now? What did they do? And Nitro, oh, no. Nitro's like, I became a father. And then I really worked on myself and I forgave my father. And then I came to grips with my brother's death. And nice. now I'm a motivational speaker. And Very they, cool. Like I went and worked for these uh, <clears throat> athletic company and we've, we've opened a bunch of gyms, yada, yada, yada. They go through them all. And then they come back to Craig. And you're like, what? And Craig goes, yeah, after American Gladi- Gladiators, uh, I found, remember, Craig's a 35-year-old father of five um, who was a runner-up on the first se- first or second season. Mm-hmm. And he goes, yeah, after American Gladiators, I found that uh, I could make more money smuggling across the Mexican border. <laughs> oh, and shit. Uh, I did that for 12 years. Like drug uh, running and like oh, people, God. like people, like human trafficking yeah, kind of stuff? Yeah, he's like, I did that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Oh, God. Um, the Mexicans, the... The Mexicans that caught me, so I spent two years in a Mexican prison, and uh, oh. yeah, um, got a little bit of clout in that prison because they were fans of American <laughs> Gladiators. So, like, <laughs> anyways, I'm Craig. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> it was the craziest thing. That's I was like, awesome. what the fuck? <laughs> That's awesome. But then I went out of it going like somebody could make a somebody probably have now going to buy if not this documentary crew or whatever. Of this yeah. dude's story, what a yeah. what a oh what right a, and do that one yeah like not as a documentary That's but as wild. a movie it's like a Tom Cruise movie. I was just yeah. gonna say that there's like so many fucking documentaries like there's so many fucking documentaries like last night I was just like browsing through just like movies to watch and there's just all these documentaries popping up and one of them was I can't remember what it was called but it was like. Dude, I was like, maybe we need, maybe there's too many documentaries. Because <laughs> this documentary was like, Jared Wilson in 1950-something decided to throw confetti in the air and then and then became the first person to, like, throw confetti during a New Year's <laughs> t- 
<laughs> celebration. I mean, that is like great. I'd no, watch it's that. not. I don't, wanna, I don't give a fuck. It's like the first guy that threw confetti. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't give a fuck about that. It depends. Like Did, it be, shit. Did he become like a like a border crossing drug smuggler? Yeah, yeah. Like what's the <laughs> twist, right? Secret. Like there must be yeah. something interesting. That's what There's I. There's nothing interesting <laughs> enough to make me want to watch the movie about the guy that was the first person that's to like throw a confetti at a New Year's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good like comedy documentary. I, but I yeah, but I saw that and I was like, dude, come on. Who wants to watch that shit? <laughs> um but I uh I watched dude, I watched this. You guys like Paul Simon? Of course. The the singer? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Of Simon and Garfunkel? Yeah. Big fan. He's, you know, he's a legendary folk artist singer songwriter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wrote some of the greatest songs of our time debatably maybe not debatably but uh there's a movie called paul simon under the african skies okay. and it's about paul simon basically uh going to south africa to record music with south african artists and that's how he made the album Graceland. And the Graceland album has like all of these like amazing fucking solo Paul Simon songs like yeah. Graceland and Call Me Al and, and a lot of those uh, that we love so much. And uh, there was like a whole bunch of controversy surrounding it because he went during Apper Feed or Apper Tide or what is it? Apper Teed? Apper food. Uh -huh. Apartheid? Apartheid, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but everybody everybody pronounces it differently. And I was like, let me make sure I'm gonna pronounce this right. And on the Wikipedia page, it says it's pronounced ap apartheid. Hmm. Whoa. Apple, <laughs> apple pie. Apple, apple pie. Apple pie. But basically apartheid or apartheid or whatever the hell you want to call it, uh, was happening during the time that Paul Simon was in South Africa and then he came back to the United States and Graceland was like a huge fucking hit album and then everybody was like wait a minute but you went to South Africa during this like boycott of you know the the United Nations it was it's a very interesting documentary it was almost like the world was like why the fuck did Paul Simon go to South Africa to make an album and then why is he now promoting this album with all these South African artists and everyone was like, this is racist. And he's obviously using these artists to like kickstart a new thing or whatever. And, it, and it, he got a lot of shit for it. Damn. And, uh, but it is like one of the greatest albums ever. And it's just a really fucking awesome documentary because you learn about all these amazing South African artists hmm. that uh, joined Paul Simon. And he basically like, he heard a tape of some South African artist and it had like accordion on it and like all these instruments and stuff. And he was like, dude, I want to fucking work with these guys. And so he like went and just jammed with them and then, um, you know, used a lot of their music in his album and stuff. And then like, you know, whatever. Anyway, really amazing documentary. If you love Paul Simon and uh, if you care about the Graceland album new? at all, no, came out in like okay. 2012 or something. Okay. Yeah. Is it Paul Simon or is it Art Garfunkel? And I'm pretty sure it's Paul Simon is actually kind of like known as a big fucking asshole. I can't like remember. Music thief. Well, Wait, you know, yeah. I think that I think the Paul Simon music thief, if it is Paul Simon, there is like a music thief aspect of the documentary where people were like, Okay, so you went to South Africa, you jammed with these guys, and then you like took their sound and their music, and then you wrote your own shit over it, and then all of it is like accompanied by these like South African artists, like cultural music, you know, music that they like that's part of their culture. And everyone was like, you just stole that shit. But the reality is, is that like, you know, he, he toured with these guys and he like paid them royalty. Like they all got royalties and they all got like a lot yeah. of money for doing it. And, you know, a lot of them talk about how their lives were changed in like an amazing way because Paul Simon came to make music with them. 
and they were like, you know, what? Who knows what our lives would have been like if he hadn't done that? But I mean, um, yeah. but it, you know, there is there is an aspect of it that's like, well, he just went over there and he took all that music, and then he made his album, and then he got rich or whatever. But the real story is, is that he like pretty much. I think that all of when you when they interview the artists who like supposedly he took the music from or whatever they talk about how they like love paul simon like a brother and like how he <laughs> like was respectful and like things like that so i don't know okay. i don't know maybe it's that maybe it's that story being kind of like without all the context yeah. it sounds like he just stole their music and made money off of it but the truth is is that like he it was he was a positive impact on the lives of those people i think yeah yeah at least in this documentary, ask, at least the way this documentary presents it. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Chat GPT. Chat GPT is Paul Simon an asshole? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wonder what it would say. It, it? <laughs> Close friends have said in passing <laughs> that he's kind of an asshole. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. What are you looking at? Yeah, yeah. This is where I. This is one of the things I learned it from. Remember the band Los Lobos? Yeah. All right. Yeah, so Los I Lobos. I love Los, Los Lobos. Lobos is Steve Berlin labels Paul Simon a jerk. <gasps> Alleges uh, Graceland snub. So <gasps> apparently like they played together and then like it was either a jam session. I, I'm not going to read the, the whole thing. He time. tried to make it work with he tried to do the same thing he did with the South Africans, but with Mexicans. I'm not and take their like sound that. and it didn't it didn't work. Uh, or they or like they should have got credit on a sound a song or something. Oh, like interesting. That didn't. It's so Anywho. funny, isn't it? Always the like li- less popular band that that like doesn't that, that comes out and goes, "Hey, wait a minute, yeah. Yeah. I need money too." Oh, yeah. did you guys know that um, uh, Elton John just performed his last? I know, man. Do, do you think that's true? Yeah, he's pretty dang old. And uh, I think he, I think he's gonna be sticking to, to his guns. Yeah, man. Yeah. Isn't that cool? I'm also That's doing crazy. a video at uh, React where I'm doing like Gen Z reacts to like the history of Elton John. I hope he does oh, more cool. uh, Kingsman movies. I hope we see him in in another. That's Kingsman one of the movie. clips I use in it. <laughs> it's so good. I love it. He's such a big part of. <laughs> <laughs> that movie of, of Kingsman, it's like Kingsman Two or something, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. like so strangely a part of the movie. Yeah, he is. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Does he get chased by like robot dogs or something? He has to fight like robot <laughs> he a, dogs. He has a huge fight scene like in the movie <laughs> yeah. in the in the theater. It's really cool. That's so good. Too bad that Kingsman prequel movie sucked real bad. Yeah, ruined it. It did, oh. I think. <laughs> ruined it. Oh, I mean, all they need to well, do I is mean, like. Any they need, all they need to do made. is make another one, and then and if it's Hopefully. like the first two, that it'll erase whatever happened with that one. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Um. All right. So because Kevin brought it up, and I feel like we just have to oh, talk yeah. about it because he brought it up, and we won't hit my other one, but we'll do that next week, maybe. Uh, threads. You guys doing it? What do you think? What's what's your what's your what's your I'm response? All for it, man. I, I have not so joined much. it yet. I have not. I have not hopped on Steve the threads. Steve hasn't train. hopped on yet. We were talking well, about it last week. I think that's healthy. What I, I just read a thing that said Mark Zuckerberg, they were like, they were going to implement that thing that Twitter tried to implement where it would like pinpoint um, bigotry and like Nazis and stuff and like immediately remove their accounts. There was like this thing that Twitter tried to do. And what happened was, is when they turned it on, it just like, was like getting rid of all it, it like automatically deleted all these like senators and like <laughs> like uh politicians and stuff <laughs> and so they're like well can't have that because if we lose our senators and politicians we lose like a huge part of what makes twitter work i guess and so they turned it off to the chagrin of a lot of people and it upset a lot of people because they were like well if the if the fucking horrible people are the senators and politicians then like fuck them right like who gives a shit especially if they're like spreading weird Nazi propaganda and shit like that intolerance to marginalized peoples and such. So anyway, that was a whole thing that came and went because nobody gives a shit anymore. And I guess (laughs) Mark Zuckerberg was like, we're going to turn on a thing for threads that gets rid of Nazis and hate speech and bigotry. And uh, they turned it on and then realized that it did the exact same thing it did to Twitter. It would basically just 
remove people who were like right on the cusp of being like Nazis <laughs> yeah. essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and then he decided to turn it off. So now this whole thing controversy is, is like none of these people have the guts to be like, there are no Nazis allowed on our platform because they're too scared of what would happen if they started to like say that, well, these people aren't allowed and these people aren't allowed. And you know, you, you would get people all up in arms. So now all these people are upset at thread threads or whatever, because they're also as they're, they're as chicken shit as Twitter is. And they're not, they're too afraid to fight Nazis. <laughs> so I read that and I was like, Oh, there's another reason to not join threads. I feel like, I mean, it's no different, though. It's the same as Twitter. The only um, reason I've... That's what I'm saying. Threads, like, why even bother, you know? Yeah. The, if it's ever exactly since the same. Elon took over Twitter, I've just hated it for some reason. I agree. I can't really explain I agree. why. It's because it's trash. It's they really ruined bad. it. They, they ruined yeah. it. The time that your your Twitter timeline is not even the same as it used to be. Yeah. Before Elon Musk went in there with his tendrils and started like fucking with shit. It's just a big mess now. And something that I love about Threads is that there's no trending. There's no like search things that like show like what's trending or what hashtags are trending or whatever. Yeah, exactly. It's literally just people's posts. Right. It's a little weird that you're seeing random people's posts, but I don't care too much. Um I I don't know. I'm like just embracing Well, I, it. and you didn't use Blue Sky at all. No. Cuz that's that I think what happened was was like you know when Twitter started to like falter and people were like I don't want to be here anymore. They started jumping to Blue Sky, and this Blue was Sky. like back Which, when all that started what's happening. What's the history of who? Owned, like, what's Blue Sky? Is this I think like Blue an Sky. Legit... I, yeah, I think Blue Sky was like people that worked at Twitter that left, that decided to make their own. Got it. I'm I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But um, you know, it was whatever, and it was kind of, and it's it, you know, I've been using Blue Sky a little bit because I'm with you, Kevin. I don't want to use Twitter anymore. I don't like it, and I'm. I find myself using it less and less all the time, especially as a business tool like we used to use it yeah, for. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, everybody got everybody got nerfed on Twitter at the for end sure. of the day. Like, yeah, your v, your your tweets would not be seen by the same people anymore. Well, yeah, and, and they would just and, be buried. And the app's not fun to open up anymore because it's no. all sh- strife. It's all angry people. It's all like, right. I, I, I sense the sense the changes like I have been fed so much right wing propaganda and like angry stuff and porn. Like a right, lot of yeah. porn has just been filtered in. It's just not, it's not a feel good app anymore. Uh, here's Blue Sky, uh, according to TechCrunch. Blue Sky is a decentralized social app conceptualized by former Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey, okay. developed in parallel with Twitter. Oh, it's Jack the, Dorsey. The social network has a Twitter like user interface with algorithmic choice, a federated design, and community specific moderation. There you go. Yeah, so when that came out, it was like people kind of jumped ship and started doing that. And then it, it kind of became one of those things where it's like, and eh, you know, it's locked up. You need an invite to get in. That, and it, I think, and is it, what's hit, like hindering it. It deterred a lot of people, yeah. but it's also in kind of like, it's still in beta, I guess. Like, yeah, it's I not. See. And it's totally f- divorced from Twitter now, also. Like, it's got right. nothing to do with it. It's, yeah. and so, um, and it, and what's interesting, what excites me more about something like Blue Sky than Threads and Twitter is that Threads and Twitter are owned by like garbage people. And this is like, you know, Blue Sky might be owned, run by a garbage person, but not nearly as garbage of a person as Elon Musk or or uh, uh, that that robot man. Yeah. And so uh, to me, it's like if you can avoid it, why not? Right. So I jumped into Blue Sky and I was like, all right, well, it kind of feels like first generation Twitter. Like it's not necessarily amazing. And but it does feel like you're free when you're there. It feels like you don't have to worry about all these weird rules and regulations that Twitter now has, and they're not doing that weird limit on how many tweets you can read and shit. <laughs> That's just and insane. Uh, it's such garbage. It's and so insane. and and so Blue Sky to me felt more like kind of like the re- the rebellious. Let's have a free Twitter that doesn't 
that that's you know it's kind of based more on what Twitter was initially meant to be more I've than I've gotten a what similar vibe now. with Threads but that's only because I haven't experienced Blue Sky but Threads has given me that same feel <laughs> I think Blue Sky might be the one to, like, keep your eye on more than Threads. I mean, Threads seems like it's one of those things where it's like, hey, it's already connected to Instagram. And it's already right there. It's so easy to just kind of slip in and give this a shot. The- and I feel like that's a – that to me, that's a deterrent. Like, yeah, I you think know, right? Threads – I think Threads just took the crown, though. They've had a hundred – For sure. A hundred million – signups now like, yeah but you know what's interesting about that too is that it's only for iphone it's not on android that's yet. what they'll have to fix which and is will for it sure will. for sure like it's uh right now and it'll probably change here's been my mm-hmm. experience so far it's overwhelmingly positive and new like everybody's just having fun with it so it feels that's like what it's i love right a, now and i'm just enjoying like, that part I'm yeah it's kind of that... a party yeah um it's it's interesting that it, like it automatically gives like a step up to all these people that like already had big social followings because yeah. all of their people automatically end up following them and stuff. So it's like I I feel like the the creator economy. You see all these creators like really giving it the juice yeah. right now, yeah. and they're having fun with it and they're throwing in their opinions and yeah. You know, I even like you know I I I. I would say I have a complicated relationship with social media these days on like why I do it or if, if I even enjoy it. Uh, and I'm trying to be very, very self-reflective while I'm experiencing it. I even find myself only opening threads now and only posting on threads now. One, because Twitter was such just doesn't make me feel good. But for a number of reasons, I found out like you would post good video or some doesn't matter it was a good idea you post something on twitter and we're all used to validation and everybody got nerfed so hard on twitter that it just felt like you were screaming to nothing you'd be like oh i got two likes on that and i think i think that was a common experience for a lot of people on twitter that used to like really get off on twitter now threads you post the same thing on threads and it's like people are seeing it again and that that social media validation that dopamine hit i really think like a lot of people are just getting off on that again oh yeah yeah. Yeah. I mean, I certainly if you like, if you take out all the politics and you just st- and you don't and you try not to think about who's running the show, you know, there's one one is a maybe a f- more fun, easier experience than the other. But yeah. it's like, man, I, I look at the end know, of the day, it's like I even I even said it. I was. Got one fucking maniac white billionaire for it ah my back my back there you my are back. yeah in my back <laughs> <laughs> i left one crazy white billionaire with too much power for another crazy white billionaire yeah exactly and the problem with threads you know outside of you know crazy people because fucking he didn't do anything on facebook to moderate all the craziness no that's the like, thing and facebook became a cesspool of yeah, like do, why garbage would we, why would we trust him to do it here but the exactly. bigger problem is is that like if this does take off and stay, which it seems like it kind of is right now, it's way too much of an of, of a monopoly for this crazy white billionaire. Like it's a yeah. monopoly. Yeah. Of of just like eyeballs and information and stuff like that. Yeah. And that that's scary in its own right. What I kind of hope for the future truly is we kind of lose the like text based social media app thing. Like hmm. I think that 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 Twitter was is a relic of its time and i think it worked really well for a long time but then when politics started to heat up for the regular folks um it became just like a trash fire essentially and uh and i don't think i've seen it stop you know it hasn't stopped being a trash fire and uh you know blue sky and threads and all this shit like everyone's gonna all these companies are gonna try to be like we're the new twitter or whatever but i think that Instagram is fine and TikTok is fine. And, you know, I don't need like, why do we need more than that? Like what I want, what I'd like to see is that Elon Musk destroying Twitter inadvertently is what will destroy text based social media in general. Like, I think we're seeing that what I'd like to see is, is that we just lose that. Like, we don't need a thing where I type out, I'm hungry, send. Or like, I'm angry at this person, send. Or like, you know, whatever. We don't need that anymore. Like, I think we have we have what social media is interesting to us. And 
in the future, I think something else will come along and we won't need that text based shit anymore. That's interesting. I don't think it's going away. I think there's something to the power of word. You don't think Twitter is going really, away? I no, mean, no. Text oh, based Twitter social, is going te- away. Text based social media apps. I but I mean, I with think, Twitter yeah. going away, you don't think that there would be like a Dude, a percentage of people that would just decide? Already... No. But I mean, but... like, but but like, isn't there a percentage of drop off in general when you're like, like, let's think yeah. about the percentage of people that are like, if Twitter is going into the shitter then I'm out, right? And I'm out and then they just delete Twitter and then they're like, I'm done with Twitter. And then it's like, you know, think about the percentage of people that did that like right when Elon Musk was like fucking it up real bad. And then think about the amount of, and then as it's like slowly falling into trash fire hell, think about the the more more people that are gonna fall off, right? And then those people- I think it's less that. I think it's less that. I think it's more because I was talking to Hayden, my daughter, who's about to turn. This is 16. what I was curious about. Is what I, a children, like a yeah. I think it's like an older generation is on Threads right now. I don't know if Gen Z and Gen Alpha are populating something like that. So that's where I think maybe that's what I'm saying. Like those young. Yeah, I think it's less like an active choice of like I don't need text based anymore. I might just be an age generation. What yeah. I'm just what I'm saying is is it's not people saying like I don't need text based anymore. It's people. It's regular people who are seeing a company fall, and less of their friends use it, and less this or that, and and less usage on their own, and just being like, well, I don't want that anymore. And that's the people that are like that know what it is and can recognize a social media text based thing or whatever. As far as the kids are concerned, dude, I don't even think the Gen Z millennial, whatever. I don't think they even use Twitter. That's what I'm no. saying. They, yeah. yeah they they just use like TikTok and Snapchat. Yeah. I think TikTok is like the main thing for younger kids. I think we're going to see Instagram and TikTok be like, the big the big two. survivors out out of the I mean that's Twitter, where they're at now, social media currently. war stuff yeah yeah and and I think as a result of that we're gonna lean more into like a visual medium it's possible especially yeah. with all the AI and Chat GPT yeah. shit and dude like I think we'll it, keep seeing more visual based shit because you know people like. The, the days of tweeting out a thing and then having it go fucking viral and be like a huge thing are like over. Like people don't get like big viral tweets anymore, like not in the same way. And and the dopamine that regular people would get from having like a hit tweet or whatever is just not a thing anymore. Now they get the dopamine from posting the the like, you know, the selfies and shit and and, you know, and the videos of like, look at my workout progress and shit. Mm-hmm. but it'll anyway. be interesting it'll be interesting to see there is like again there's just juice there there's like a, yeah. there's a juice there that i haven't seen in a while and Same. it's kind of fun i think the juice comes from the the ease of being able to get it right like it's right there and the you're already scrolling Musk. you're already scrolling instagram all day right so it's like why not all i have to do is tap this thing and now i'm in the threads and it's not Elon exactly. I think that there's an exciting aspect of that. But once people realize that there isn't going, you're not going to get the same dopamine rushes from something like that that you used to get on Twitter. I don't know. I think it'll fall by the wayside, and TikTok will still be ruling the. I think. Let's revisit it in a year. Let's do it. Yeah, let's check it out. Yeah. <laughs> Let me All right, guys. Well, listen. Thanks for listening to today's show. Damn, dude, we were over an hour today. What? Bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Uh, Elliot will probably be back next time. We miss him. We love him. We miss him. God bless them. God bless They're them. Great people. God bless Elliot and Grace. And Grace who's and going God through bless- some real hard times right now. Um, very publicly. I can't imagine what that must be like for the two of them. Um, you know, give them love. Give them love. Maybe Elliot give will talk love. about it on one of these shows. Maybe not. We don't need yeah. to, We don't want to push it. <laughs> you know, that's not what we do here. Give them love. All right, Show guys. Well, thanks for listening, Joe. Anything else? That's it. Let's get out of here. All Let's right, go. guys. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>